carry a walk on. As I try to add Empress, the life cut off. I walk on or something this. I was really going a while ago. Instagram, you be motherfucking playing. Why are you playing Instagram? Why are you playing? Gaga, I don't know, I just got to click for add the lady to the live. And the live cut off. Me used to them have all no way. You can collect money from your live. I'm going to see soldier boy them give that. The option there, I'm going to see it. Not nice alliance, brother, brother for life. You see me? Empress, let me see you. Comment, let me see you, Empress. Me cut off for her. Because of boom and say add to live. And from me add to live, it just cut off. Let me see what I'm going on. Let me see what I'm going to do now. Blessed love. Blessed, blessed love. Highly, 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 highly. Blessed Empress. What I'm going on? Hold on. I got to get my volume up. Yeah. Shaman, turn it down. Hold on. All right. You can't hear me now? I think the glass is good. Yeah, you hear me good now? Yeah, I'm good. Empress. Empress. Yeah, the volume's like it's low on it. Are you hearing me? Can you hear me? I can me? hear you. I can hear okay, you. Now. Very good, very good. Highly blessed. Welcome to the program. I go by the name Futa Ibe. You know, I've met you before once. Um, can you introduce yourself to the people? Tell them your name, what you're about. You know, and all of that. Just make an introduction. I am Empress Red Lioness. That's me. Uh, I just released my album and my EP on uh, November. My first time making music, and it has music from every, for every genre. It has country, rap, hip hop, reggae, dancehall, and we call it Unity with Genres because I don't like only one your know, music. I like all of them. So, let me ask you: Where are you from originally? Are you Jamaican? <laughs> I am the whitest white girl you ever meet. I am from upstate New York, Syracuse. Oh, you're from Syracuse. So you were born in America. Yep. You don't have Jamaican parents? Nope. Okay, so let me ask you this. What, because I see the red, gold, and green flag around you. I see uh -huh. the setup. So it looks like you're enthused by Rastafari, a Rastafarian culture. How you got introduced to this kind of culture? So that's interesting because uh, it happened like six years ago when I met my King Rasta at the beach. And I did not know anything about Jamaican culture, reggae culture, any type of anything, nor had I even, maybe like I knew who Bob Marley was because of course everybody knew who Bob Marley is, but I never I really looked past who Bob Marley was because American culture is not as, you know, it's a Mr. Christ himself. <laughs> so, so basically, you're saying you, you, you met the culture through your, your husband, right? Mm -hmm. So you met in Jamaica? You met him in Jamaica? Mm -hmm. He's from um, in Kingston. He's from Kingston. Wow. So you met him at Elsha Beach then? I think he's, he, I know, at Clarendon and all them, I know he's around down there. His father goes there. But that's yeah. I don't know. Listen, I've never been there. You, did, I didn't even know Jamaica was like a. <laughs> I'm so okay, American, so but it's horrible. You just know you met him on a beach. You don't remember which one of the beaches. You just know that you fell in love on a beach, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So basically, he he educated you about the whole culture of Jamaica and the rest of our and culture and Selassie and all of that, right? Like, um, it was my next journey because I was born um, 
all about Christ and church, and I was in the church with choir, and I did bells. I played piano every Sunday, practiced for this big congregation, a huge congregation that my grandparents and family was in. But there was something I was felt like I was missing. Like there was something, you know, we to get my confirmation, I had to go to a Jewish church. I had to go to different type of churches, not just my own, to see if this what you wanted to do. But I still felt like there's something missing that I haven't learned about yet. And when I met my husband, I was in a rough type. I was more in an American world of uh, thinking something that I wasn't and a person that definitely I shouldn't be. And I finally like woke up to, I used to drink, I used to smoke cigarettes, I, I used to eat meat. And all of a sudden, when I looked into Rastafari, who Selassie I is, and what there is actually a higher power than this one person everybody's saying that it's kind of something different like why wasn't i explained to this why why don't more people want to see love and less hate but americans so like and you know i don't so, know so at this point at this point are you still a member of christianity are you still in the church you're done with it my, my rastafari church me i and i you know <laughs> yeah but you finished with the whole Christianity thing, right? It's baloney. Coming from yeah. a Christian white girl, that is baloney. <laughs> it's bullshit, right? Baloney bullshit. means bullshit, right? Bullshit. I mean, okay. come on. Americans always take the best thing and make it worse. So if you have a cross like this, but a real cross <laughs> look like the that. Aunt. The, the aunt, first thunk. Yeah. I the have aunt. one right here. Right, right. here on my neck. <laughs> right, right. So I've been trying to tell my people a long time. I've been trying to tell them like, Wake up, get about your slumber, you know what I mean? Like, study your history before the Bible. The Bible is a yesterday book. You mm -hmm. have you have millions of years before the Bible. You have to try to study beyond that, you know what I mean? And they, well, why don't more people talk about who Celestia is? Because he's your, he's a more greater power than any Christ or God that was up there. Because this man, this man's done some crazy things. And why isn't he in more, in more schools? And why can't we talk about him more, you know? It's yeah, crazy. because cause the system is set up for us to not be knowledgeable <laughs> of, of black people that are great and that have done great things. They don't know who Mansa Musa is. They don't know who Hannibal is. They don't know any other thing, you know? So mm -hmm. I'm really kind of glad that you're here because sometimes we, we can deny it all we want, but there's racial prejudice in the world. So yeah. sometimes hearing it from somebody white makes more sense. Listen, my family it. still, it, it, it's very hard because um, really from who I grew up as, I grew up as a really, a preppy rich white girl and I was very ignorant. I Me, mean, myself, I can say that years ago, I was an ignorant white person and I, and I can see it now that I didn't see it before and it's crazy. And, and coming from a white person and coming from somebody that was, as I say, I felt like I... I have more control over a lot of things than other people. And when I started looking at even getting with um, a black person or a Jamaican or anybody in my family, it's horrible. That was that was already something that I had to. I was like, why are you guys like what you mean? There's do you teach me this and what you like the color of my skin is not supposed to matter from the different person but you tell me that every day christ is not white he was dark skinned too like you guys gotta look at the pictures that you put out these are these are things that y'all are not listening to but you're speaking but you don't listen to it and for me i couldn't do it i was like no this is not happening um i, I woke up it was like a, a real wake up like it was different it's definitely different it's, it's a journey. Well, i want to thank the universe for giving you your husband so that he could open your third eye so you could see greater far beyond the brainwash, you know what I mean? Um, my question to you is, you said this is your first time doing music. Well, music, well, music for myself. Uh, I Like I said, I did music my whole life and I was in dance classes and I performed in front of lots of people growing up from what my family used to put me into. Then when my middle patch of lifetime came, I kind of pushed everything to the side and was like, yo, when I kind of got mad at Christ, it was kind of like, yo, I'm done with this. I don't want to do this. I'm not doing my passion no more. But slowly, with my DJ Shata down back here, I met him about and my husband. Um, we kind of pushed more. They pushed me into seeing a different type of music. And when I listened to less crap and less uh, swear words and 
cuss words and and this and all this type of this it kind of changes your body because you're just negative all that music like all that rap music for me is so negative and it wants people to do different things than they should do so you're basically saying um because of your experiences you have evolved into embracing music on a different level because your intake of knowledge is no longer brain or scrap but you have proper positive knowledge yeah. to put forward mm -hmm. for me for me growing up when i had music it was a, it was music that was on a piece of paper it had a note that i had to sing i had to sing c d e I had to sing A B C. I had to sing Do Re Mi. I couldn't sing me. I couldn't say my own words. I couldn't sing off note. I couldn't sing. But you teach me to sing. You can let me sing, but I can't speak my own words. And if I did, I was always told you gotta write it down and throw it away. But my words were never. My words are probably gonna be more hurtful right now because when I started really writing, I kind of got more angry to people. But when I used, when I did make my unity with genres. I was like, you know what? I'm going to do something for everybody. I'm going to say that you can't tell me if you're going to listen to my album. I promise one of the seven, you're going to like it. One of them. Okay. <laughs> one of them, you will. So, let me hear you sing something with no beat, no nothing. DJ, oh, don't, I don't worry. Don't do don't play not yet, DJ, <laughs> I want you to just um, sing me something that you wrote from your heart. Something that you wrote from your your emotions, like nobody wrote that song for you. One of my you. own, one of my yes. own, or just sing. Just sing one of your own songs that came from your heart. <laughs> Whichever one comes to mind. I gotta get my wedding honey back. I'm ready to go. Hold on, let me get some honey real fast because I just got off work. As you see, I'm in my room in Celeste. So. <laughs> Hold on a second. Shout out to that. But I'm not supposed to have a beat though, he said. <laughs> I bought one of these honey bears earlier just for this. Because I knew he was going to do this to me. <laughs> I do it to every as single you know, artist. As a reggae, I have too much raspy voice right now, so I killed it. <laughs> Okay. And also, I added some extra things into my, my, my daily diet. And, you know, uh, uh, a little bit. Okay, but, go ahead. <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, it's America, you know. Whatever. Um, all right. So, out of one of the seven songs, mm, I love you forever. Tomorrow is for you. Stay with me forever, cause I'm walking in your shoes. To rivers and oceans, all across the world. Stay with me forever, cause I'm daddy's little girl. I love you forever, tomorrow is for you. Dance with me forever, cause I'm walking in your shoes. Flowers and butterflies, shooting stars across the skies. For you, I know I'll always try to be the girl his future is bright. Past the ocean, past the sea, daddy's girl I'll always be. Cause I'm daddy's little girl, daddy's little girl. That's a little one. Oh, so you wrote, that, you wrote that for your father, right? Well, me and my daughter wrote it together. She kind of wrote it for my for her stepfather, okay, and okay. I helped her write it with my dad. For my dad. Okay, okay, I understand. Very nice, very nice. Because usually you don't hear a lot of songs come out singing for fathers, you know. It's always about mothers and stuff like that. So wait, mm -hmm. um, so basically you started your own music, like launching your own music this year, right? No, well, for my own music, yes. Um. I've been working, we've been gaining our own, um, like, record label, kind of. It's called LOK Empire, because our DJ um, put on a party, and we kind of helped them out. And after that, we kind of gained some artists that we work with. And I go in the studio helping these guys out and helping them out. And I'm like, yo, I can do this myself. Why am I spending money on y'all and helping y'all when y'all don't even, half of y'all don't even want the driver, have the driver? I don't know, it's just, like put too much hands out, people take too much. So I was like, you know what? Let me see if I can do this myself. So one day I was going through Beat Stars and I heard the beat, which is my first song called Problem. 
And I was like, all right, I'm going to be a problem, a real big problem. I'm like, yeah, all right. So then I started writing, but when I wrote problem, I um I wrote it about, it's basically my journey from when I was little to my middle life to, to my life from now. So that song is kind of my push right now, but that, I just went into the studio and was like, yo, instro, here's the beat, let me see what I can do. And I did the whole song all the way through, so I've been, I've been still going, but I also have a, a following as a dog groomer. That's what my main job is. And um, well, so your main job is, is 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 a dog groomer, like I am Orlando's best dog groomer. Four years running from Orlando Magazine and Orlando Weekly. <laughs> yeah. So, what? Explain to me what dog grooming is, because in Jamaica, our dogs groom themselves. The mongrel dog grooms well, itself. <laughs> Yeah, but this is, like I said, it's America, so we we make everything. And Jamaica has dogs, but those are dogs. We have pets. America has pets. Those right. that you have down there, those are dogs. Those those guys are wild animals that are what they are and do what they are. But in America, we love to take everything as our own. So we have pets, and people love their pets, but they're also good companions because dogs, they do a lot for us in daily things. Dogs can... Like for seizures, they can see when you're sick. They can help you go get a Coca Cola out the refrigerator if you really trained it to. But me, I um, I was told I couldn't do what I'm doing, and I said I was gonna do it, and I did it. And now I'm Orlando's best. Okay, I was so like, you know, like, trying to make some music. <laughs> you cut dog hair. You do their nails. You get them dressed. You, what what? I paint experience. them, dye them. We put nail polish on them. Um, I have a cat back here right now that's running around. But I groom them. I mean, we we use clippers and shears just like they would for, for human hair, but we just style it a little bit different. I used to do showing in, like, the rings that you see those dogs on TV. That's where I started. And I thought it was too judgmental and too governmental. <laughs> Government, like, it's too much. If you make the wrong person upset, you're never going to win ever yeah. even if your dog was the best looking one and i said you know what let me do this with humans and see if i can do it with their pets and 20 years ago it wasn't as big as some people have animals in their house and now everybody has some type of animal in their house so you like cats you like dogs what what, what other animals you you enthusiast? any animal i'm actually allergic to dogs and cats so like i have to take medicine to be around them <laughs> But I'm a real, I do everything and anything. Um, I groom horses. I've had pigs in here. I've had goats in here. I've had birds in here. I've had guinea pigs, ferrets. People bring, and I have people come from everywhere. Um, this week, uh, Thanksgiving week, I had somebody come from um, North Carolina just for me to groom their dog. And I also had somebody stop in from Scotland. That was the coolest one. Okay, let me ask you this. You have your DJ, as I can see. What's his name again? Who? What's your DJ's name again? Shotman. DJ Shatterdown. Shatterdown. And I see you have your whole thing set up. So you're planning on giving us a performance, right? <laughs> I mean, I had him here just in case, just in case you need to hear some music. But Okay, crack something up and let me hear. Oh, yeah. Also, today today is my, um, my grooming salon's four-year anniversary. And we usually do a live feed with my social media and hang out with them. So that's kind of why it's also set up, too. Oh, so let him play something. Let him play me a song, one of your songs. One of your yeah, recordings. we have music playing right now. I can tell him to turn it up. I'm going to have him pull it up. This, this one right here is called Babylon D3. All right. This is my go. reggae one. Yeah, let's go. Oh, 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 oh yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. Because what? Turn it up some more. L-O-K Flying Empress, yeah. Send out a baby, oh, and I need your help. Because what? We've been through the circle with all the sound of the gun. Now how to save me trouble. You can't tell by the way I sound. How can you judge me when you just can't figure me out? Claiming you love me, but love is something you know nothing about. When I said, oh boy, you know boy, you know boy, oh boy. When I said, oh boy, you know oh, Babylon, oh, oh, and you know oh. 
Cut the music now. Tell him cut the music now. Hold on, I can't hear you. DJ Sartman, cut the music. Thank you. Well, <laughs> this is what I want you to do for me. I want you to tell the people on the live what's the name of the album, where it's available, and all of that. All right. Well, it's gonna be put in there already because I have admin in here, and there are like, hold on, thank you. I'm going to make sure it's in here so everybody sees it. Even if you type it, I still want you to tell right. them. Well, <laughs> you can find my music everywhere. Spotify, YouTube, iTunes, Tidal, Amazon Music. Everywhere music is sold. It's called Unity with Genres and Press Red Lioness. Unity with Genres, right? That's the name of the album. Yep. Unity with Genres, people. That means unity in every different culture whether it be so techno have, whether it be hip-hop whether it be r&b whether it be reggae she's there she got a song on the album for you i have seven i have rap hip-hop pop reggae dancehall uh country and what was the last one? Oh yeah i said pop rap i got everyone there's a, there's, there's a different one for each one I'm not a techno person, but I could put some, you know, but I'm not an EDM type of. <laughs> oh, God, sleep or kill me. Well, Empress, um, I want you to tell the people them your Instagram engine, your Facebook engine, and your Twitter engine so they could find you. All right, so Instagram is ER Problems, like emergency room, ER Problems. And the same thing on Facebook, but if you go to YouTube and everywhere, it's Empress Red Linus. Okay, so people, you know where to find her. This is Empress Zane, Red Lioness Zane, and she had a music, love music, unity music. She's also the number one animal groomer in Orlando. Cause when I want to say dog groomer, because she do horses, ponies, cats, Winning. all different kind of animals. Winning. So, pick up yourself, Empress. It was nice having you here on the show. Your story is amazing. Big up the Rasta man with your phone loving that showed you the light. You know what I mean? Big him up. Big up to your DJ. Big up Royal Entertainment. Because, of course, she was the one who introduced me to you. And, you know, it's been a pleasure. And I think you, you have that sound that could really work. That sound? Yeah, because most, you know, you have that international sound. Maybe it's because... You were raised in that era where you were raised in, and then you got to um, merge with the Jamaican thing. You kind of have a sound, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, have a song, I like it. So take care of yourself, big up, and I want you to encourage your other white friends and family, if possible, to the light. I, cause, I definitely try, and I'm going to do that. I promise you that. Yeah, because obviously you see the light. And you got to show them the light as well. You know what I mean? 
yeah so it's all about the light so welcome to the light love and light yeah black power you know, big up yourself mama those are your <laughs> kids right good. shout out to your kids yeah he's my little one he's, he's the rest of you <laughs> All right, Empress, give thanks. Ailey, bless it. Blessings. Appreciate it. Yeah. Bless. Bye. All right. More on to the understanding now. Big up, Empress. Want to see how powerful the rest of the thing is? Want to see why when me a ridicule Rasta when them go low, it's important she a born American. Yeah, she said, I was born as a little rich white girl. Meaning the money I never had a problem. Her problem was finding her soul. Her problem was finding the truth. You understand? Her problem was finding closure to why she feel empty. She did feel empty. All of my girl in a church and all of them things there. She feel empty. And I search, say I search and end up at Jamaica. And the ancestors them connect her with the Ailey. The ancestors them connect her with the far right. And she never turned back. And the far right makes you see, say, all the way they might do a, a lie. I remember, so what they might do would have benefit she more, you know, because she white, you know. And she have a Lego Christianity and cut left that and no foolishness. And our black people, they might hang on to that. I'm afraid to find himself. You understand what I mean? I say, John Oster, yo, man. these things don't go show you so the universe are work with me. Because how oh, she end up on my show and I spit them truth and them knowledge there. And you have a million people and you say, we still want to cut me truth for Jesus. They would have cut me truth for the illusion. Well, me glad she find the truth and know so them things, the illusion. And she over here, so with the rest of her, right? She over here, so with the black race. You understand what I mean? I say, and she definitely has to say a blackness she had deal with because she even embed herself in the music. Jaja. And the rest of them don't realize how precious what them have is in it. And how influential the Rasta culture and discipline is to the world. John Rasta, yeah. Anyway, you don't know. Big up Empress. Big up Royal Entertainment. You know, big up everybody out there. We're tuning into Footer Hype Life. Now, I want to speak about this thing before I forget. <laughs>